Welcome to Picks with the Professor, the show where a real statistics professor gives you sports betting tips. I'm your host, Professor Sides, and in this episode of Major League Baseball Picks, I will outline the prices that I think make for good bets using the predictive mathematical model I've built, affectionately known as Sideline for games scheduled to be played on Wednesday, July 5th, 2023. In case you're new here, check out the webpage on the banner. It's www.pickswiththeprofessor.com slash new. For some explanations and community rules, Remember, if you're interested in picks and projections on every single game, sign up on Dub Club. That link's in the show description. Costs you under $1 a day. You will get money line prices, run line prices, first five prices, totals, all sorts of goodies, and, of course, exclusive access to our Discord chat. We've got a lot of good people in there giving out suggestions, looking out uh, for, for boosts and uh, bonuses and <clears throat> all sorts of good stuff over there. So check that out if you haven't yet. Remember that sports are unpredictable, so the discussion on this show projects a typical game and does not try to forecast it to a T, as it will be a foolish and impossible goal. There are no right sides or wrong sides, but rather there are prices where any side should be played. Now, obviously, sometimes we look at the line and we say there's no price, is nowhere near that price, and you don't even have to worry about it, right? So, of course, that's that's totally fine, too, right? There are situations where you have a dog and you know you're offered plus 170 and you're like i need at least like plus 250 and you're like it's never going to get there that's fine think about what that price would be um i've got a grade thresholds b grade thresholds <clears throat> you know all sorts of ways to help us think through that but whether it's using my information or someone else's or some combination this is the type of thinking that's going to be key to growing your bankroll instead of draining it there will be ups and downs but with this sort of thinking it'll balance out in the long run it's just hard to foresee before the ups and downs happen day to day in other words please understand the good and bad variance will occur so the long run profitability has been proven winning every single day is an impossible reality for any gambler um <clears throat> we had a little funk uh, for those of you with us on Dub Club with the A plus play of the day, uh, where it just wasn't performing as well uh, for maybe a week or two, it was a little bit, uh, you know, frustrating. And, and it was like a week or two. And then it was kind of like, OK, again, there was like another week or so. It was a good, you know, mediocre month for those which have always been really strong uh i think those have won seven of the last eight now and, and that's come around and that's just that good and bad variance we talk about there's gonna be some down swings and then there's gonna be some up swings um we're seeing that right now with the a grade plays that aren't the a plus play of the day uh kind of really struggling here the last couple of weeks some of that is Bad variance. Um, some of it has to do with just the it, it's good and bad, right? Having the first five and the run line and the money line options, you know, sometimes it overcomplicates things. And that's why um, you know, I always have the the money line thing is kind of the focus if you want to just stick to one market because you kind of kick yourself for choosing the wrong things. And a lot of games it doesn't matter, right? It's just kind of a team gets out to a lead and they just win. But you see a lot of situations where that's not necessarily the case. And the pirates last night is a great example of it. And it's something I've been thinking a lot about lately. There's a big difference between how I'm doing this personally uh, and displaying this and communicating this information to y'all. And it's something that I've been working on uh, ever since I started this. And, and I think it's gotten a lot better and I hope it continues to get better. I hope it never stays. I hope I always am continuing to improve month by month what I'm offering, how I'm communicating. Um, it's not necessarily the easiest thing because I know there's a lot of people out there who like to do things a little bit different than I do. That's totally fine. I'm trying to figure out how can I help you? Um, so this is all good feedback. If, if you have any of that for me, things that uh, I can add and, and help out, you know, I'm, I'm always open to, to hearing that. Now, sometimes it's just a, an impossible request. But one of the things with that that I was thinking is, um, you know, I've kind of tried to been sticking to like one pick uh, here for, for display purposes and that Google sheet, I'm big on transparency. Um, if, if you need to see the transparency part, you, you can go back on dub club. They, they show the posts that are like three days old. Uh, so, so they'll show that, uh, so that you can see and, and verify. It looks the exact same as what you see in the Google sheet and in, in the show description. Like I said, I'm big, I'm huge on the transparency thing. So, so <clears throat> uh, you can always go verify that, but it, but it's, you know, one pick per game isn't necessarily realistic. It's not how it's really done, right? And we talked about that a little bit on Discord with the Pirates, that there's situations where you say, hey, I thought the best pick was first five uh, run line. 
And now the whole Luis Ortiz was probably tipping his pitches. Uh, I, I, we talked about this on Discord. I have, n- I have not very often seen a team never look fooled. I mean, major league pitching, even bad major league pitching, you're a fool hitter every once in a while. And up until the pitching coach came out and talked to him in that last at bat and, and Freeman got was a little bit head and behind and completely looked fooled when, when he struck out. Those hitters were not fooled. They, they weren't always hitting it perfectly because hitting a baseball that fast is very hard to do. But I mean, they were confident swings. They were on it timing wise the whole time. And, and he's tipping his pitches almost assuredly. And, you know, we lose the run line in the first five, six to five, I think it was. And, it, it, you know, it, it's a situation where it's like, you know, you get five runs or maybe it was seven, six. I can't even remember. You, you get five, five, six runs, whatever it is in the first five. You expect to win that bet, especially when a push gives you the win. We missed by one run. The Pirates tied up the next inning. Had it been a first six bet, we'd have won. That's just the way it goes, right? You're going to have that where it flips, where you, you get the tie there and they blow it the next inning, right? So, you know, that stuff will balance out in the long run. Uh, but none of us are actually just going to do that one thing. If we think there are edges in a lot of the game, and there were edges across that whole market, and we talked about that money line press kept going up and up and up, and maybe dabbling a little bit on the Pirates money line, Pirates run line, you know, looking good as well. And so personally, you know, I'm kind of splitting my wages a little bit between all of those markets and, and unlucky in the first five, but got the full game. And because it was all plus odds, a profitable game. You make one pick, you know, you get the, the good or the bad, it creates more variance. And so it's, it's something I've been thinking about. How do I create this so that I can display all of that for y'all in a situation where I say, no, I think there's just one pick. This is just the best one. Just stick to this versus I like all of these and let's dab a little bit here and there. So it's something I've been thinking about. I'm going to talk about a little bit more um, today and hopefully that sort of thing. It can also minimize your variance a little bit uh, more because you're not quite so caught up on what happened in extras, what happened in the fifth or the sixth, whatever, that sort of thing. Um, you know, was there a garbage run that, that cost you or got you the, the run line? When a lot of times maybe you want to split your bet between run line, money line, or maybe you want to split your bet between that and the first five and, and one can can kind of save you, <clears throat> that sort of thing. So anyway, uh, just something I've been thinking about here, uh, and I'll talk about it if, with, with a few of these games again. Hopefully, uh, I've been thinking through how I can display some of this stuff so I can kind of illustrate, hey, in reality, it's it's we're going to put three units on this game, and here's how I, I think it's probably the best way to split them, and that kind of gives you a starting point to think about how you want to attack the game. Uh, so again, all of this coming for Dub Club people for every single game. We'll talk about it a little bit on the shows here, but again, uh, a lot of good information I'm trying to provide for our people over there but enough of that let's talk about wednesday only one day game unfortunately probably because of all the day games here on the fourth which was a lot of fun thank you at least we have one thing to keep us uh keep our eye on this afternoon i'll talk about that one in a few night games but before we get to it some quick reminders please hit that like button if you're on youtube also if you aren't yet please consider subscribing or following it's free and if you turn on notifications you won't miss any of the college basketball mlb college football or coming this fall nfl content this channel Provide. You can see how I scale my picks on the screen in that Google Sheet with the season results. That link is in the show description. But as always, with the scaling and the picks, take what you like and leave the rest. The day game will involve my Houston Astros, 2 p.m. Eastern, hosting the Rockies. The, the too long, don't read, too long, don't listen version of this is that the Rockies have the second largest differential between home and road record this year. And that's not a fluke. One of the things that I think is very important to keep in mind, and it's something that comes not really naturally to humans, right? We are trained to see patterns and try to overanalyze those things because evolutionarily speaking, that's what helped us survive when we had to deal with, uh, you know, not that we don't have wars today, but back in the day when there was more enemies, more wars, more things like that, wild animals living out in the wilderness, right? All that sort of stuff. We were trained to survive off of patterns. As a default position, your brain should probably go to it's nothing, it's noise, it's not a pattern until you get overwhelming evidence to prove otherwise, right? And that's a lot of the times the way I look at home road splits. We talk about it all the time. Pitchers do better at home. Teams do better at home, right? If you're going to look at something that's a really extreme split, 
your default position should be, I don't think it's real. I think it's just noise. And I think it's going to kind of trend back towards what we know. Same thing with lefty righty. People make a huge deal about lefty righty. And there are some exceptions. There are some lefties who can hit a lefty pretty well, but for the most part, it holds true. I was watching the Reds broadcast. The other thing they were talking about Joey Votto and his numbers against lefty. And they were using batting average saying his batting average didn't fall off that much. His batting average doesn't fall off a ton. His slugging does. Why? Because he has a different approach against lefties because it's harder to hit the same handed pitching and lefties don't face a lot of lefties and their career makes it tougher on them. Right? So even a guy like Joey Votto, who you talk about hits lefties better than the average lefty still has a penalty for facing a lefty. Right. And again, there are random exceptions to that, but your default should be righties are going to hit lefties better. Lefties are going to hit righties, but right. You're just default to that. Right. Don't overanalyze anything to the Rockies though. We see this literally every single year. They are in the top of biggest differentials between home and road splits. There's a reason for it It has to do with the fact that when you're playing in altitude, it's a whole different ball game. They are more used to it. They're going to play better at home when they go on the road. Uh, Is there anything that makes them any worse on the road? That's a little bit more up for debate. It could just be a more home field boost. But then when you look at their average performance, you still ding them for going on the road because their average is boosted by the home game since that's half of them, right? So kind of whichever way you want to look at it, the Rockies are much worse on the road. They always have been, even with a completely different set of players, uh, partially because they have that big home foot advantage. You're seeing it again this year. It's no different than every other year. So the too long, don't listen version of this is don't back the Rockies on the road. If you're going to back them, back them on uh, at home. They have won 13 times, I believe this year at on the road. I think they've lost 30. Uh, I'm going to pick the Astros here. It is a really steep price at minus 225, but it's really good value. According to the model, a grade pick model says this should be Astros minus 332. That's a really high number. But you have an Astros team that offensively at least is average. Again, when fully healthy, this is a really good offense. And against a righty, I think it's probably actually a little bit below average. Of course, benefit for them, they're facing a really bad pitcher in Chase Anderson. They've got a good bullpen. They've got a solid pitcher in J.P. France. And again, this Rockies team on the road just isn't very good. And the model knows that and boosts this probability by an, by about a percent. That's about what you should adjust here for the Rockies. is about 1% extra at home, 1% less on the road. Uh, if the Ashes win the 77% of the time, this is a smart bet. I don't care if it's big odds. And, and you know that if you've been listening to me that I'm preaching, it doesn't matter if it's big minus odds or big plus odds. There are prices that are good and prices that are bad. This is a good price. Um, it is a little bit of a steep price. I'm not playing the run line. Why is that? Because the run line's a little bit inflated. I think a lot of people are looking at this game at least for now. And I don't know what's going to happen as we go to first pitch. And these markets move around for different reasons and there's different explanations for different games. So I, I don't know, but my, my hunch is at least early on what we're seeing is we're seeing a relatively high money line price. And I think people are a little bit, you know, a lot of people who are a little bit scared off on, on that. So I think some of the early betting from people coming in is coming in on the run line because uh, people like to play things closer to even money. Why? It's really mental. Like if you actually look at it from a purely, if you went purely mathematical and ignore all your, and some of you are not going to be able to understand this, but just try try to work with me here. If you ignored your emotions, your feelings, your thoughts, right? And you just looked at it from a purely mathematical standpoint, it honestly does not matter how big a minus or plus you're playing if you're looking at this in the long run. It's going to matter day by day, absolutely. Because if you're playing, let's take this to the extreme example. Let's say you're playing minus 1,000 picks. You're going to win most of them, right? The one day that you lose one, your numbers are going to look terrible. And, you know, and, and, but mo- and most days your numbers aren't going to look that great. You're just going to be slow, slow, slow win. But in the long run over hundreds, thousands of bets like that, it doesn't matter if you're playing minus a thousand plus a thousand or even money, because in theory, as long as your probability that you win is still higher than the implied odds from what, or for the implied probability from what you're betting in the long run, you're still going to be up a little bit based off of how big your edge is, right? So it doesn't actually matter, but that's not the way people operate because people can't separate their their thoughts, their emotions, their feelings from, you know, like playing these big odds. So everyone's like, oh, well, the Astros are a good pick. I can't play them on the run. Let's play them on the run line. The run line price is a little bit inflated for me. It's not a terrible pick. It's just not a good one. Sideline says that the Astros can win by more than one run 60% of the time, that the correct uh, run line price should be minus 149. The current price I'm seeing is minus 122, and A grade is minus 129. So it's not a bad pick. It's, it's B minus grade, B 
B grade, someone that ballpark at minus 122. So it's not a terrible pick. It's just that it's not got quite the same value as the money line does because the money line should be a lot higher. My hunch is it gets higher as we get closer to the first pitch. I have no idea, though. Every once in a while, number goes the other direction. I don't quite understand it. Uh, but I think the Ash is a way to look at it. If you're going to sprinkle a little bit on the run line based off its, its edge, I'd be looking to do most of my money on the money line and a tiny little bit on that run line. The Astros probably run away with this game because they're the better team and the Rockies are terrible. But being the home team uh, makes it a little bit harder to cover the run line. Model knows that. Sportsbooks know that. Everyone knows that. And that's built in as well. So um, run line, not, not terrible. It's just not the best pick. In my opinion, the best pick is the minus 225. And so that's what I'm looking at here. Uh, again, in the long run, we can play minus 225s as long as we're winning at a high enough clip. Model says this one wins at a pretty good clip. Total in this one is 9. Model projects 9.1. Nothing really to talk about in the total here, in my opinion. 7.40 p.m. Eastern rolls with the Twins. Uh, I've loved these first two games. I mean, it has gone just to script. And that's the thing. You know, I always talk about the good and bad variant. I talk about things that will balance on the long run. I talk about hard to foresee, right? And, and it is. You, you never know exactly what's going to be. You never know when a pitcher is going to be tipping his pitches, right? Uh, you, you, never, you just never know. Weird things happen in sports, right? I, I say that all the time. And I try to talk about the most recent example because it's – fun to laugh and reminisce and be part of a group of people who's all watching the same things and be like, yeah, that was weird. Right. Um, this rolls twins. It's fun when it just goes exactly like it should. Right. And that's what we've seen here. Uh, so far in this one, the twins have been, uh, playing well, uh, scoring a bunch of runs, uh, games have been going over, uh, Twins run lines. I mean, it was just going to play, and this Royals team is terrible, right? And and it's fun when they play terrible, and you can bet against them. Um, for whatever reason, the price has not been that uh, reflective. I think. I think that it's just really been mispriced here these first two games, and and I kind of see the same thing happening in this game. I think it's mispriced. Now again, weird things might happen. The Royals aren't going to lose every game the rest of the season. But I mean, Alec Marsh against Pablo Lopez, this is a massive mismatch here at starting pitcher. Pablo's 424 ERA. He hasn't been that bad. It's it's a little bit of smoke and mirrors in the negative way. We do expect some positive regression. Regression doesn't necessarily mean a bad thing. It just means trending towards uh, what you expect to happen based off whatever factors you're considering. And we have enough historical data with Pablo and we have the underlying metrics that suggest he hasn't been that bad. So we expect him to pitch better going forward, obviously against the Royals offense. That's, um, you know, pretty, pretty rough. Uh, that should help him out. Right. So I mean, expect better things from Pablo in this 424 ERA going forward. Uh, Marsh in his first start did not look good. The underlying metrics were not good. He's not taking too much of a hit from that in the model. Cause the model is going to look at that and say four innings, like I'm going to use it, but I'm not going to like freak out. But it, he wasn't a guy I was overly high on coming up. Um, I, I thought he would do a little bit better than that, but, uh, you know, he's still going to be somewhere in the average to well below average. There's, you know, he, he's, he's a guy who again, might be closer to average. Uh, he might be closer to well below average. We don't really know. There's just you know, minor league translations. We have point estimates, but the, the variability is a little bit high, but, but he's not great. It's a massive mismatch here. It's a massive mismatch in the bullpens. It's a massive mismatch on offense. It's kind of like the first game we talked about the home team should be massively favored. The difference in this one though, is I think the run line is really good value. You. I'm on the run line here at Twins. It's an A grade pick. Model says they cover the run line 60% of the time. An A grade price is minus 130. So I locked in minus 120 here just a few minutes ago. You can do the same thing and play the money line. The money line edge also is good. Model says that the Twins win the 76% of the time. It should be minus 318. Anything minus 264 or better. Um, it's at A grade, and I'm currently seeing minus 240. So this is a game that I think has a good edge on both the money line and the run line as opposed to the day game. Uh, I'm going to play the run line here. It's been working. I don't really see why you should change that. But as I mentioned at the start of the show, and if you just skipped forward because you don't want to hear the rambling, do go back and listen to that. I think it's important to be thinking about how we're splitting bets, and hopefully it's a little bit of a teaser of 
fun things to come for you. But this is definitely one where, you know, because there's a great edge on both, it may make sense to kind of split your wager if you're playing. And not all sports books have them, but a lot of sports books have the minus one plus one. If you're playing at one of those, playing the minus one, right, might be a little bit of best of both worlds. There's a lot of different strategies out there and how to handle this. And I don't want to say that one is right and one is wrong. It kind of depends on the different edges. It kind of depends on your situation, your bankroll, how many books you're playing at. There's just a lot of factors that go into it. And a lot of it's just kind of personal preference. I think the twins are underpriced. The run line is a great value. And I wanted to highlight that as the individual pick, but sprinkling a little bit on the money line, I think makes some sense too. Don't just throw these big money lines in the, uh, you know, 10 money line parlays. Don't try you know, that sort of thing. But if you are going to do a two team money line parlay, you know, it twins with, a, with another game. I think makes some sense. I would not put the twins and the ashes in Moneyland Parlay. Why? And they're both probably going to win. It probably is going to win. It's not about that. It, it's about the fact that the, the only benefit to the parlay is the fact that you don't have to be risking uh, larger amounts of money. It's bankroll management. It's the only benefit to doing some sort of uh, parlay to avoid the big minus odds. If you actually just single bet the Astros and then take your winnings and then bet all of that on the Twins, it's the exact same thing. Like that's literally the math and how it works. And how it's calculated, it's literal to the penny, the same thing. The only benefit would be locking in the, the odds. The, the thing you, you want to do is just play the Astros if you're going to play them. And then you can take your money, then you're free to do whatever you want with it later. Um, the Twins, though, if you were into a money probably with another night game, that would at least make sense if you, if you had another big favorite you liked. Because then uh, you're not exposed in two different games. They're happening at the same time. So something to think about there, if, you, if you're playing the Twins on the money line and, and you don't like the big minus odds, I'm gonna play them on the on the you know on the minus side a little bit, sprinkle a little bit there, sprinkle a little bit here on the run line, playing them both ways. As we've talked about for this entire series, I think the over makes a lot of sense. I think the twins team total over also makes sense. Model says 9.5 runs. Current total is eight and a half. It's part of why the run line I think is good value. I think the twins are gonna score a decent amount of runs here. I don't think their offense is great. I just think that this Royals pitching staff isn't likely to hold them down. You do have another day where the wind's going to be blowing out. That's going to create, take routine fly balls, turn them into doubles, take doubles and turn them into home runs. Temperature wise is pretty normal for Minnesota night games here. Uh, nice night, but the wind should be at 10 miles an hour or more blowing out for most of this game. So massive boost to the expected number of runs because of that massive boost to the expected number of runs because the Royals pitchers are involved. I think the Twins score a lot, and I'm playing this one basically the same way we've played the first two games. It's worked for us. Hopefully it can work for us here the third day in a row. 9.05 p.m. Eastern Mariners at the Giants. Chilly night in San Francisco, wind blowing out, but also it swirls around there, so not really making too much of that. Should play moderately pitcher-friendly. The hitter friendly days you see in San Francisco those day games ball carries a little bit better there partially it's the temperature partially because uh you know the the weird fog and the uh, rolling clouds coming off the water uh, and all that sort of stuff I'm not a meteorologist but we tend to see that happen night game here it should play pretty you know pitcher friendly uh one of these guys is going to need that help. The other one isn't. Tommy Malone versus Alex Cobb. Tommy Malone, I really thought was like out of the league. He did okay uh, in his first start here with the Mariners, but his underlying metrics weren't good, and the Mariners kind of realized they had a ton of other better pitchers. He's been in AAA for a long time now. Uh, I think he's a well below average pitcher. I think that's not going to bode well for the Mariners. Uh, obviously, one of those young guys – uh, you know, is on the IL now, and that's why you see a guy like Tommy Malone coming up. These younger pitchers that they called up have been really good, and that's been key to them kind of maybe now turning it around. Those guys are getting a little settled in, playing a little bit better as of late, but, you know, massive drop-off for the Mariners and pitchers with Malone. Alex Cobb for the Giants. You all know how I feel about him. I love this guy. Uh, fantastic pitcher here. Mariners' bullpen still better offensively. Both teams are pretty solid. Uh, according to the model here, Mariners offense getting a little bit, bit of a boost, scoring a little bit more as of late, kind of playing more like we thought they would, which is not a great offense, but a decent one, a, an average one, right? And if they get average offense and their pitching comes through with that bullpen, they're a good team. That's their kind of playbook. That's what we've seen as of late. Um, I still think this Giants offense is a little bit better. Uh, they're at home, of course. 
Biggest difference, though, is the pitcher. So I'm on the Giants. Here's the caveat to this game. The first five markets haven't opened yet by the time I hit record. It probably will by the time it's done. So uh, I'll update on Dub Club. There's a bunch of lines that aren't out yet, a bunch of first time markets that aren't out. So update if you're on Dub Club with us. I'll update that here later this morning. I actually haven't played this yet, personally. I really want to see the first five market. The Full game is influenced by the bullpens. And obviously, like Camilo Doval has been really good for most of the season, uh, Monday aside. This marriage bullpen still is really good, still might be the best bullpen in baseball. Uh, and, and if the Mariners keep this close early, that bullpen we've seen as of late, they're hanging around. They can come back and win games late. I think the first five makes a little bit more sense on this one. Uh, I want to see what the price is, though. Model says that the first five price for the Giants should be minus 180. Anything minus 155 or better would be an A grade. Uh, so we'll just see what the price is uh, when it comes out. Kind of a situation where, again, I'm thinking about playing a little bit on both. I just want to see the price and how to distribute it. But if you're only looking at full game markets, minus 140 is a B grade sideline since the Giants win 62% of the time and the price should be minus 162. Minus 152 or better is a B grade. Minus 140 or better is an A grade. So I like the Giants here based off the starting pitcher mismatch. I think it's not price. I think the Giants, there's, I think the Giants should take on some money here uh, as we get closer and closer to game time. It's when I want to get early rather than later uh, because it'd be my hunch is that the Giants are going to take on money. But uh, again, not seeing the first five yet. I'm holding off for now thinking about how I want to play this one because I personally would rather have more of my investment on the first five hopefully get the win, get out of dodge. And then if we've got a little bit left for the full game, great. Don't have to stress too much about it because we've already made sure the game is profitable. Total in this one is eight. Model says exactly eight. Nothing to talk about on the total. I think eight's a perfect number. And wrapping us up here, 10, 10 p.m. Eastern Pirates at the Dodgers. Typical night in L.A. Wind blowing out, dying down as the night goes on. Around 60 degrees, maybe slightly chillier than average. Normal night game, but slightly chillier than average because day games are rolled into it. Um, but pretty standard from what we would think to happen here in a night game in L.A. Osvaldo Beto versus Bobby Miller. Both these guys have ERAs in the four. Both of them have underlying metrics that say their ERA should be in the four. Both of them project in the fours. The difference is Beto's more in the high fours. Miller's more in the low fours. I think Bobby Miller's a better pitcher in this one. Um, probably not shocking anybody saying that. Uh, I think the Dodgers have a starting pitcher edge. Uh, Bullpen-wise, this Dodgers bullpen, Oof. Uh, last night, you know, you can give him a pass a little bit with Phillips first day, first time this season uh, where he's done three days in a row, maybe in his career, to be honest, he, you know, he's relatively only been late for a few years now. Um, you know, throwing three days in a row is tough for most relievers, even throwing like three and four is not necessarily ideal for a lot of relievers. So, and that's, and that's, of course, you know, why if you're a good pitcher, you're a starter, right? Because you, you can get more innings because you still need some time off, right? And, and, and so you can kind of give last night a little bit, bit of a pass. But this Dodgers bullpen's really struggled. They are kind of pitching a little bit better as of late. Uh, but overall, it's been bad. Last night cost them again. Um, you know, it, it's just, it's been not great uh, for them. Really, Model still doesn't think they're that bad. Model still says they're slightly better than league average. And I tend to agree. I tend to think that, well, overall, they're in the bottom half uh, of bullpens this season based off their performance. We always have to remember, right? ERA tells you what happened. It's not necessarily the best predictor of what will happen. I think this Dodgers bullpen is better than that, but they definitely aren't what we thought they were coming in. We thought they would be better than this. And the truth is probably somewhere in between. We probably thought they would be maybe the fifth best bullpen or show in baseball for sure. Top 10. We really thought for sure it'd be a top 10 bullpen. And they've had some injuries. Every bullpen's had some injuries this year. We really thought top 10. They've been performing bottom 10. The truth is probably somewhere in between. Uh, so I still think this Dodgers bullpen's okay, but this Pirates bullpen uh, probably can go toe to toe with them. So the the big catch here is what happens early on in the game, and then at that point, I think it's kind of a toss up on the pitching side. Obviously, the Dodgers have better hitters. Pirates have been hitting the ball as of like got a bunch of young kids called up. Uh, let's help them out. Uh, 
obviously they still really miss O'Neill Cruz. Uh, he probably takes this average all the way up to league average. So I think they're a little bit below league average. I've been impressed with them. They're trending in the right direction, but we're not going to overreact right yet. The Dodgers still have the better offense. Dodgers should be favorites in this one. Absolutely. Model says uh, they win this game 70% of the time that the correct price should be minus 232. Not really seeing much of an edge in the full game right now. This is exactly what happened yesterday. There really wasn't much of a full game edge, if anything, to start the game, but the Dodgers kept taking more money and more money and more money. And as we got closer to the game, there became a pirate's edge. Today, the, the needle shifted. Why is that? Because I'm not a big Emmett Sheehan fan. I know that he pitched really well in his first two starts, but again, we always talk about a guy coming up from double A is almost doomed to fail. Uh, the fact that Wu has done so well for the Mariners is incredible. Uh, that's so hard to do because the caliber of hitter at double A and, and you saw it last night with the pirates, even the pirates with a bunch of like triple A plus hitters and their lineup, uh, all these kids that have just called up that, that are, are solid and have some potential, but they haven't, they're not seasoned hitters right in, in the majors. You saw it last night. If you watch that game the pitches that he was trying to get the chase on, they just were just let it go. And I think he walked three batters in the first inning and I guarantee you he got strikeouts on those guys in double A. He probably would have even in a triple A, right? It's tough to do. Was not a big Emmett Sheehan fan. Underlying metrics for him were not positive. Uh, I thought those first two starts were all smoke and mirrors and sure enough, that's exactly what we saw last night. So my threshold for playing the Pirates was lower last night than it is tonight because tonight I think that Miller's a little bit better, a little bit you know stronger of a pitcher here. Looking to get plus 249 or better in the Pirates gets to a B grade. I'm not sure if I'm investing unless it gets closer to an A grade. That's plus 275. That's a long ways from now. So we're going to have to have a ton of Dodgers money before I play full game money line. Full game run line. Model says Dodgers win 53% of the time. And that's probably where most of y'all are looking, whether it's Dodgers or Pirates, you're looking at the run line. Model says 114 is the correct price. I'm seeing minus 122 on the Dodgers. So that's a no-go. But I'm seeing plus 102 for the Pirates, also a no-go. Now that one, if it gets up into the plus 120s, I'm a, I'm a little more interested. If it gets up to plus 130, now we're talking A grade on the run line, and I will probably jump if the run line for the Pirates gets to plus 130. Instead, though, I'm going back to the first five market, and I mentioned I know this is the tougher part for the Pirates. They have to weather this storm early on and that they throw are throwing a more questionable pitch when we're holding our breath with Beto, but this price is really good. The probability that we can get a draw really helps out. The first five money line edge is okay. Uh, model says that the first five price for the Pirates should be plus 203. I'm seeing plus 215. That's not bad if you want to dabble there and see if they can pull off the victory uh, in the first five. But the probability of a draw, I think, is higher than the books are indicating. I think we're seeing the same thing here that we that I talked about in the Astros game. And it might not even be that the money's there. It might be that the sports books are expecting the money to go there and they're trying to look out for where they might have a liability coming in. Again, the sports books have other things to consider than we do. We just have to consider what's a good price. They have a lot of things to consider. So they could be protecting themselves on the Astros run line. And that's why it's not a great price, why it's not as good of a price as the money line. It's it's decent, not, not amazing. And the same thing could be happening here that a lot of people playing the first five market could be looking at Dodgers minus half a run and that they inflated that price and that's created an edge for us on the other side on the pirates model says the pirates can win or tie 44 percent of the time that that anything better than plus 148 makes an a grade so plus 155 is pretty good it's not quite a coin toss but it's close to a coin toss anything close to a coin toss within say six percent like this one at plus 155 is a great investment so right now i'm playing the first five pirates on the on the on the run line here thinking about the full game run line maybe uh, i need the price to be better before i really dabble into that otherwise for now i'm just sticking to the one pick total wise projection is 9.3 current total is nine if i had to play something i'd probably play the over uh like last night but the thing is last night other than the tipped pitcher situation and the fact that Sheehan just couldn't get anybody to bite uh which i don't think bobby miller will struggle with we saw that at the end of the game the runs kind of died down a little bit so uh, I, I'm not, I'm not running to play this over, but if I was going to play something on the total, I'd play over nine as a model says 9.3, but I'm not really that excited to do so. And that's probably a pass for me there. That's all I've got for you here today. Thanks for tuning into this episode of Picks with the Professor. Don't forget to subscribe so you can ensure the sports betting content provided on this channel is dropped right into your feed. Props, going to have a props video for you later today. 
So check that out if you're into the player props. Otherwise, I will be back again tomorrow with more baseball betting content. But until then, as always, best of luck. And remember, you can eat your betting money, but please don't bet your eating money.